According to the AFP, senior Israeli military officials have said around two civilians have been killed for every Hamas fighter that you have successfully killed in the Gaza Strip. So that's two civilians for every terrorist. Can you confirm that? Yeah, I can confirm the report, uh, and I can say that uh, if that is true, and I think that our numbers will um, be corroborated, if you compare though that ratio to any other conflict in urban terrain between a military and a terrorist organization using civilians as their human shields and embedded in the civilian population, you will find that that ratio is tremendous, tremendously positive, and perhaps unique in the world. Uh, I understand that there are civilian casualties, and I understand that footage and coverage goes towards emotions uh, and to, to cover those civilian casualties. But what I want to say is that we will get those figures out, and they will be official and on record by the IDF with the okay. name behind it. And then we will be able to say uh, and to back up afterwards with names and numbers that we are indeed targeting the terrorists. We are not after the civilians, and we are going into great efforts in order to keep it that way. And uh, it is, yeah. it is, of course, hard to comprehend two for one. But when you say you're going to great efforts, Colonel, one of those efforts is those IDF directions, which I don't know if, when you actually plugged in, but I had shared with anyone watching at the top of the show the directions for evacuation yeah, I saw that the, you've put I out. Saw yeah. what you spoke about All right, it, so yeah. you know there's the QR code, right? Um, and then if you click on can't right now because there's a, a blackout. But if you were to click on it and you were to see where to go in this in this urban area, tiny little parcels block by block, numbers, I suppose, it's hard to even read it. Um, how do you really expect anybody to, to get that, to click on it, to see it, which they can't do right now again because the blackout, and then to follow the directions and to get somewhere safely? I mean, is that is that reasonable? Um, I think, Erin, that it may not be perfect, but it is the best thing that we can do. Uh, the situation is that for weeks we have designated a humanitarian zone and we have been asking civilians to go there. Unfortunately, civilians, for various reasons, because they're under the control of Hamas, because international aid organizations have channeled them there, many other reasons, have not yet gone to the humanitarian zone, which I think is very unfortunate. The reason why we made that or designated that humanitarian zone is because it's one of the few areas where Hamas isn't embedded above and below ground and therefore a relatively safe area because we would have no interest in fighting there because Hamas isn't there. And that's what we've been asking all along. The attempt or what you showed on the map, and I can agree that it's not perfect, but by the, by the way, I contest the fact that there's a blackout because I saw Lots of cameras out when our hostages were being returned, and I saw lots of live footage mm -hmm. from those occasions as well. Well, so tonight, though, tonight though there is. I was actually going to interview the spokesperson for the Red Cross. We were unable to get communications, Colonel, for 45 minutes. Yeah, I mean, there I've is a widespread blackout tonight. I've seen the spokesperson of UNICEF on CNN and every other living network, and I think that there isn't really such a blackout because evidently he has service, and many others have, and there's video coming out. Listen, I understand that it's not perfect, but this is what we are trying to do. We're mm -hmm. trying to reach out to Palestinians. We're trying mm -hmm. to inform them ahead of time where fighting is going to be in order for them to be able to take precautions and move from where there's going to mm -hmm. be fighting. I don't know how else we can uh, square that circle of defeating Hamas where Hamas is and minimizing civilian yes. casualties. I if do... anybody with military experience has an idea, we're open for suggestions, but it has to square in defeating Hamas, mm -hmm. not seizing operations and letting Hamas win, but defeating Hamas and minimizing collateral or damage to civilians. Colonel, one final point on the blackout that, that, that has been going on the past few hours, and the Red Cross was there earlier, there was video earlier, then this black, and that's actually why we had the interview scheduled with the Red Cross. Then the blackout affecting uh, most of Gaza has been in effect. Do you know if it's been resolved? Do you know why it's in place? 
I am not aware of a blackout. I am aware of uh, problems with coverage in local areas. There have been reports of it, but I see live streaming by Palestinian propagandists from various er areas, including from 20 minutes ago. I watched it live uh, of a very known, uh, notorious Palestinian propagandist. He was uh, live on TikTok. So there is Wi-Fi. Maybe it's not specifically uh, with uh, the Red Cross that you were speaking with, but I am factually mm -hmm. aware that there is live internet services in Gaza. Not perfect and not 5G Manhattan speed, but there definitely is international in internet service. All right. Well, Colonel Conricus, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for having me.